Yes, thank you. There's many things that we can learn and see and experience. At every event where there's a group of Boy Scouts that are being awarded, the Little League, there's the International Association of Associations who have their presentations. Someone needs to be in front of the room guiding, facilitating for success. But otherwise, it turns into a lot of mud and a lot of annoyance and a lot of dissatisfied <clears throat> mothers of the uh, little leaguers and such. And our opportunity today is for us to share and learn a little bit through some interaction of what I have seen and what many before me have experienced as masters of ceremonies. So to be a master of a ceremony as opposed to the amateur of event is the goal that I've learned to do and follow some great people. So we're going to talk a little bit about what is master of ceremonies, what's an MC, uh, and who is your most memorable when you think of a master of ceremonies or an MC. Uh, Joan, who do you think of when you think of MC? What flashes to you? Billy Crystal from the Academy Awards. Billy Crystal from the Academy Awards. He was one of the first who really stepped out of the box, or out of the closet, as they could say. Uh, for that, yes, he was huge. And Robert, what's one that flashes to you? I think of Ed McMahon. Ed McMahon. Why is Ed McMahon? He was the, he was the pitch guy on The Tonight Show for decades. Mm -hmm. Exactly. He was the one who, you know, just, he was the glue that made it work. The glue. Exactly, the glue. That's commonly what I remind myself of, who's the MC? because they were the glue. They helped bring things together, continuity, still had flavor and fun. The glue, exactly. Some of the other most famous ones that I recall, for me, was uh, oh, W.C. Fields. He was a different kind. He was an actor. But when he got in control of that Blackville show, that's where he started. He ran the shows. Many others. Um, an MC is even, in Toastmasters, you have the person who runs the event. So that's another MC style person. Or at, well, I hate to mention them, but conventions. Every convention, business convention, someone needs to be in charge at all times. In control, running the room. It's another form of MC. Now, what is a master of ceremonies is part of what we're going to talk about. As you said, the glue. It is the glue. They sell the show. They're there to honor all the, the events, the performers, the musicians, the arrangers, the little kids collecting their participation trophy, whatever it may be. They are there to sell that show. Just like you said, Ed McMahon, the pitch man. That's the ultimate position. Now there's different ways of doing that, different styles, and we're going to learn and look at a lot of that tonight. There's three basic steps to getting repeat MC jobs. First, how do you get the first gig? That's a pretty common question, and I found it's easier than most of us think about. And how do you get the repeat gig? That's almost as easy as the first one. Same process. And then the one that's really easy to do. How to lose that repeat game. That one I've seen too often. And that's why I started helping people learn and look at masters of ceremony skills and why and how. The roadmap, we're going to talk about a roadmap. I suggest you wear a good hat. I wear a hat. Robert, do you know the joke of, of where a Panama hat's from? Have I asked that question in your presence before? So what's the answer to you? Where is a Panama hat from? Where is a Panama hat from? Your closet. My closet, that's one place for mine, or my hat rack, correct. Uh, Joan, you had a wild guess? Is it a trick question? Could be, if you answer it. Well, no, I just thought Panama. Panama, that's a common answer, I have to admit. <laughs> uh, when I'm in schools, kids will say Walmart, China. It actually comes from Ecuador. So I wear an Ecuadorian hat. It's a Panama style. That's a hat to me. And I'm known as a man in a hat. It's a brand that works. But for this situation, for a master of the ceremonies, I suggest you think of a hat. A successful MC is always in the presence of being happy, 
they're always going to be adamant and clear that they're there for a purpose. Take it serious. And they want to be timely. Because everybody is dependent upon you and keeping it going. Making adjustments when need be, but to be timely. To be aware of those things. So then the next step is, well, you're going to wear that hat for. What's the purpose? Who's your customer? Who's that decision maker? And you ask the question, and we all have that. No matter what the job is, who's ultimately the decision maker? And that's who you're performing for. Your performance is for that person who's the decision maker. Is that you, too? Oh, that's not me. That's another nut that we know here locally. That's Brad Montgomery. Brad Montgomery, the man who drives around with coffee on top of his car. Yeah. It's his, his stick. Take a, a Starbucks coffee cup, put a magnet in it, a really good magnet. You put it on the top of your car and drive down the street. Doesn't fall off. Yeah. He's a nut. Good man. So how do you get that first gig? That's what we wanted to get back to. I said, I'll tell you. It's simpler than most people think. And I try to live it, and it works very well for me. When you have enthusiasm, you stand out in a positive way. And I'm not talking about being a cheerleader and jumping up and down and rah, rah, this and that. But be excited about what's going on, what you can do about the event. I mean, the Academy Award, people are enthusiastic about it. You know, they're so enthusiastic about it that they dress up, spend billions of dollars on clothes. You know, some of the ladies' outfits, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars for a skirt they're going to wear one time. That's their choice, but they're enthusiastic about it. But to be an MC, a master of ceremonies, having the enthusiasm is an ultimate pose. <laughs> Bless you, is a need. Okay. Now, how do you get that repeat gig? That's a concern, too. Because it's fun to go do it that one time. But to be in business and be profitable and be paid for it more than once, if you don't want that repeat gig, there's a very unique little thing to do. And it works in so many arenas. And that's to have your enthusiasm, but be professional for that client, that decision maker, the person who writes the check. <laughs> and that professionalism runs through almost every vein of what you do the timeliness, and some areas we're going to look about about presentation, how you set up the room, how you respond to the client, the customers, and the people in the room. 